Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our first ever virtual sixth form transition day. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mr. Pycroft, and I'm the head of sixth form here at Highfields. And I'd just like to welcome you to the day and say that I hope you have a really fantastic experience. In many ways, it does feel a bit of a shame that we aren't able to get all of the students into school in person. We usually have a really fantastic transition day where we get to meet everybody and we get to do lots of activities. So that is a shame. But having said that, we still think you can get an awful lot out of our virtual transition day. There are lots of different sessions that we've put together for you and hopefully you find them really informative and really useful. Would just like to say to start with, if you have any questions following on from the transition day, please feel free to contact us at school. Um, the email address for the sixth form team has been put across all of the resources we've produced for the day. Please do feel free to contact us at any time if you have any questions, or as you're here now in the question and answer session, use this platform, ask us any questions that you want, and we'll be more than happy to answer them for you. A couple of housekeeping things before we get started with the questions. First of all, in terms of students actually submitting questions through to us, on your screen now, you should see this event and you should hopefully see my face and be able to hear me. If you look in the top right hand corner of the screen, there is an icon that if you hover your mouse over it, it will say show Q&A. If you find the icon and you click on it, that will then open a tab on the right hand side of the screen. And at the bottom of that tab, there will be a purple button that says submit a question. Click on that button, you can type your question in. You can submit your question anonymously if you wish, but equally you can choose to have your name to your question. If you send that through to us, that will come through to us on the system and then we can make our way through the questions. And we hope to be able to answer as many possible questions as we can this morning. But again, like I say, if there's anything that you want to know about that we don't quite cover, please feel free to contact us afterwards. The other thing I'd like to do just before we start is I'd like to introduce our other speakers this morning. So there are going to be five people presenting as part of this Q&A session. So obviously you've got myself, Mr. Pycroft. Um, our second guest this morning is our sixth form manager, Mrs. Corbett. We'll get Mrs. Corbett to unmute her microphone the next time she speaks. We've then We've also got our assistant sixth form manager, Mr. Maxfield. Morning, everyone. Morning. Thank you, sir. And we've also been joined by our head girl, Emily Longman. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Emily. And finally, we've been joined by our head boy, Yuvraj Bagotra. Hello. Brilliant. So really, the format of this session now is over to you. Um, we're going to receive your questions and like I said, we'll make our way through them and hopefully get as much information across to you in the next sort of 55 minutes as we possibly can. So we've already had a few questions come through to us. So I'm, I'm just going to start making my way through now. The first question that we've had through is, will students be able to come into school for GCSE results day? The honest answer to that at the minute, and this is, might be a common theme throughout the morning, is that we're not 100% certain. Obviously, with the restrictions that are currently in place on how much school can open and how many students can be in school at any one time, it means that we can't really make any firm plans for August. Obviously, the things that we can guarantee is that all students will definitely get their results on GCSE results day. It just be that we might be able to have students in school or it might be that we have to do a remote results day whereby you might receive your results via email, for example. But the other thing that we will make sure that we do is whether we do it in person or whether we do it remotely, we will make sure that there is support in place for students who have any questions about their results or if they've got any questions about what their results potentially means for sixth form, there will be members of staff available to help you with that and provide information and guidance that you need so that you can make an informed decision about your next steps once you've got your GCSE results. Obviously, we would love to be able to see everyone in school. GCSE results day and A-level results day are really, really great days in school. 
we have to keep that in the context of what's going on in society at the minute and obviously public health and making sure that everybody is safe and healthy is our primary concern and we will only allow students back into school and the government have said that that's possible and we're confident that that's possible in school as well so what I would just say is watch this space and we will let you know as soon as we know what's happening for both A level and GCSE. Excellent. Uh, we've had a question come in. Um, it says, when and how will head boy, head girl be selected? Um, well, actually, I think it might be uh, worthwhile heading over to our current head girl and our current head boy because they can talk you through a little bit about the what they went through to get in the position now and I can answer any questions in terms of the application process as a follow up if necessary. So if we head over to Emily first and Emily can just talk about how she went through the application process. So when we applied for Head Boy and Head Girl, it was nearer the end of year 12, if that's correct, I think. And um, we had to first of all send in a letter of application, which basically outlined why we thought we were good for the role um, and then also so you had to say why you were good for the role and what kind of things you would bring to the position. And then it, there was a few stages after that, so a short listing of candidates for interview. And then you would go for interviews with um, the head teachers, Mr Tate, and then a few governors, and then also Miss Corbett and Mr Pycroft. Um, and they would ask you obviously questions about the role and why you were suitable and just kind of like a more in-depth look um, at your letter of application. And then someone was chosen from that. So it was a really interesting process. Um, and then obviously, if you don't get head boy and head girl, there's other positions available too. So deputies and also other people that may focus more on certain aspects of the school leadership team. So the environment or other things like that. Yeah, there's, Emily's basically said it all there. <laughs> Like we applied, we were selected for interview and then we we answered a couple of questions about what we do if we were head boy and head girl, um, what sort of things we could get across to students, how we talk to multiple students and yeah, stuff like that. Some meetings with Mr Tate, that's it really. Thank you very much both, uh, very informative. Just to put it into a bit of context for you as well, um, we're currently going through the application process with the current cohort of students that are in year 12. So our current year 12 students, if they're interested in applying for the position for next year, are currently going through that application process. Um, at the, the window for applications will close in the next few days and then we hope to be able to do some form of interview with them at some point between now and the end of term. But again, like I say, a common theme this morning, that will be a little bit different this year given the fact that not all students are in school but hopefully that's something that we can do. So it's something that's done at the end of year 12, um, but it doesn't hurt to start thinking about now. If that is your aspiration, that's something you think you'd be interested in. And obviously the, the sooner you start thinking and planning for that, the better. Thank you very much for that question. That's great. Um, we've had another question come in. So I'll just read it out for you. Uh, I do apologize, I'll turn away from the camera just to, to read the question. For subjects such as further maths, which have less students, does this directly correlate to more one-on-one -on -one time with the subject teachers? Very good question. Um, simply for the fact that obviously if there are a fewer number of students in a group, so if you've got four students in a group, then that's a, a teacher ratio of one to four. And if you've got 10 students in a group, it's a teacher ratio of one to 10. So based on that logic, then yes, you might get more access to an individual teacher, but we don't necessarily go out of our way to make sure that that is more specific one to one time. I think one thing that's really important to get across about being at sixth form, and it's certainly something that many students tell us each year, one of the things they value the most about being at sixth form is just how approachable the staff are. It doesn't really matter if you're in a group of four or if you're in a group of 24. If you have an issue and you feel that you need one to one to one conversation, they will always go out of their way to make sure they find time to support you and give you any advice or support that you need. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, staff are very approachable and if you do need to access a one to one staff, they will always do their very best to do that for you as quickly as they possibly can. Thank you very much. Uh, next question now, will students who are new to the school get a laptop? Um, 
I tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll say a little bit about that, but then I'll also hand over to Mrs. Corbett in a moment because she uh, often supports the process of allocating student bursary to students. So she might be able to say just a little bit in terms of uh, laptops in relation to bursary students. So there is an expectation at Highfields that all of our sixth form students bring a device to school. Um, for the students who are coming through from year 11 at the school, um, if they wish to keep their HP stream and bring that into sixth form, that is certainly an option for them. And our upper school team will be writing out to students in the next few days to give more details about that. Alternatively, if you are a current student, but you want to bring your own device or you haven't been at Highfields previously, so you haven't got a device from school to bring, you can bring your own device into school. That's absolutely fine. And if you want to do that, um, then you don't actually have to do anything until September. And all you would need to do in September when you come and enroll is bring the laptop in and we will connect it to our network. All the same filtering is in place so we can make sure that you're being safe online. All the same um, support is there in terms of our IT team. It just means that you get to bring your own device in. And some students prefer that because it means that they can um, have the software on there that they feel they need to support the, their learning. Student voice in sixth form often tells us that students quite appreciate the opportunity to use their own device rather than something. So you do have that flexibility, but you do need to make sure you have a device. If for whatever reason that's going to be problematic for you, there is support in school that we can look at. So I would encourage anyone who thinks that could be an issue to contact the sixth form team and speak to us and we can talk about the ways in which we might be able to support you. And at that point, I'll just pass over to Mrs. Corbett, who will briefly be able to tell us a little bit about student bursary and how that links to laptops. OK, hopefully I'm uh, not muted now. Um, yeah, we do have a discretionary bursary for sixth form students um, who, um, for whatever reason, find um, financially it's a little bit more difficult. Um, so we can do that three times a year. There are certain criteria that you would have to meet. So you would have to have a green progress review uh, and our progress reviews come out a number of times during the year. So we'd look for good progress in your subjects, but also attendance. We also look for attendance over 96%. Um, so if you meet those criteria, and it's an issue financially for you and your families, then we can look at bursary that may be able to help with laptops, may be able to help with other issues within school. Um, so again, as soon as we start the new term, we will begin that process, um, but just come and talk to us, come and talk to me, and we'll explain more about it um, as we go through the year. Thank you very much for that, Mrs. Corbett. Um, hopefully that's answered the question. But again, I'll keep saying, just keep reminding people, any follow up questions or anything that isn't quite clear for you, just email us and we'll happily follow that up for you. So the next question we've had through, uh, it's a common one we get from students joining sixth form. When we don't have any lessons, are we allowed to go home? Um, the answer to that is both no and then yes. So in year 12, all students are expected to remain on the school site all throughout the day other than at lunchtime when you are allowed to go out for lunch if you wish to. During your study periods, during break time, which is 10.45 till 5 past 11, you are expected to be on site. Okay, the reason for that primarily is because um, we run supervised private study sessions and obviously you need to be on site for those. But even students who don't have to attend supervised private study, we want to encourage you and help you develop really positive study habits and using those study periods to get your schoolwork done is something that we really want to encourage. So for year 12 students, you have to remain on site all day other than at lunch. When you get to year 13, we peel that back a little bit. And actually what we say in year 13 is as, as you're starting to get to the point where you're approaching the end of your time in sixth form and you're probably thinking about university or going off into employment, giving you a little bit more independence. So for year 13 students, most of year 13 students are allowed to only come into school when they have lessons. If they don't have lessons, they don't have to be on the school site. The caveat to that is that if you are highlighted by a member of staff through your progress review or just through feedback that we receive, 
as either not keeping up with the work or not quite being where we'd like you to be in terms of your progress, then we will ask you to attend supervised private study sessions again. And obviously that will mean you have to be on the school site during your study periods. So really there's a bit of an incentive for our year 13 students. They're working hard and they're on track. They get that greater extent of independence. Those who are struggling a little bit more and perhaps need some more support, they will spend more time in school where staff can help them. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, the next question we've had through is another anonymous question. How are you going to follow through with external interviews if someone hasn't had one yet? That is a very good question. We are currently in the process of finalising those questions. Obviously, again, it's not going to be possible to invite students physically into school um, given the uh, restrictions that are in place and obviously the guidance from the government. Um, it's still very much a case of only be out and about if it's necessary. And actually what we think is uh, we feel that we've got the capability to conduct interviews remotely using technology similar to the technology that's being used to host this question and answer session this morning. So we are going to be writing to our uh, external candidates who haven't yet received a sixth form interview over the next few days. Um, once we've got transition sort of done and out of the way, that's that's one big job sorted. The next thing that I'm going to move on to is uh, looking at those interviews. But yes, we are now confident that every external candidate who hasn't yet been interviewed will be able to be interviewed before the summer and you will receive some correspondence from myself early next week to give you more details of, of when that will be taking place. But it looks highly likely now that it will be done through Microsoft Teams uh, in this format and obviously look at ways in which yourself and perhaps if parents want to join in, they'll be more than welcome to. But that's how it's looking like it's going to going to be. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Uh, next question. What set what sets Highfield six form apart from others? How are the A level results like compared to other schools? What are the AAB rates? Okay, well, I'll tell you what, I will take the part of the question about um, a level results and specifically um, and then in terms of what sets Highfield apart from others um, I tell you what I'll, I'll go a bit rogue I'm going to ask each of our four guest speakers to have a think whilst I answer the first part of the question and we'll go to them each in turn and uh, they can tell us what they think sets Highfield sixth form apart from others okay so in terms of our A level results I'll, I'll be completely honest I don't know the exact number of students who've got the specific combination results of AAB. But I do know that in terms of grades, um, over three quarters of our students, and this has been a, a common trend over the, the previous few years, around three quarters of our students have achieved at least a C, and anywhere between sort of um, late 30% to all the way through to just over 50% of students achieve a grade B in each of their subjects. So we have really, really strong results in sixth form. Um, that really is built on a foundation of some really, really high quality teaching and learning. And certainly kind of moving into the second half of that question, the, the what sets Highfield apart. To my mind, there's, there are many things that sets Highfield apart. I could probably spend the next 40 minutes of this Q&A session talking through all the reasons why I think you should join Highfield. I'll just pick out one before I hand over to our other speakers. The quality of the teaching and learning that takes place in sixth form really, really is exceptional. And I know you would probably say that I'm biased because I work at the school and I am the head of sixth form, but I genuinely can hand on heart say the quality of teaching and learning here is excellent. We have really, really uh, highly qualified staff who have a great deal of subject expertise in their areas. Many of our staff work for exam boards, so our understanding of how you will be assessed is really, really detailed. And generally speaking, the experiences that students have in the classroom are both engaging and challenging and also very supportive. So that blend, that combination comes together to make a really, really positive learning experience for all of our students. At that point, I will, I'll tell you what, I'll go to Mr. Maxfield first, if that's okay, because Mr. Maxfield hasn't had an opportunity to, to speak with us yet. So Mr. Maxfield, what, what makes Highfield stand out for you? Um, so for me, Highfield is a really, really inclusive school. Um, so for those of you that don't know, I was a student at the school. Um, I went up, went over to university, did my university degree, did my master's degree, and then I've come back to school. Um, and it still remains a really inclusive school for both students and staff, and that hasn't changed in the time that I was there as a student or as a member of staff. 
So if I had to pinpoint one thing, probably that one thing would be the, the amount of inclusion there that's, that's on offer to, like I say, both students and staff. Thank you very much, sir. Um, we'll now go over to Mrs. Corbett, our sixth form manager. Right, hello. Um, I think it's the pastoral support. I think generally the support that we can offer all the students in school, whether it be um, through our safeguarding, our welfare, and just the day-to-day -day support that the sixth form team can offer. Um, I think that that actually makes such a difference um, and we can see that when we do surveys and we ask the students and we ask the parents, um, that is often the feedback that we're thinking about the whole student um, as well as the obviously the educational curriculum part. We're also thinking how we can support in other ways at all of the time. And I think we can be really proud of that. Thank you very much for that, Madam. We'll now hand over to Emily. I would say the same kind of thing as Miss Corbett, but also the fact that your um, subject teachers care so much about you as well, as well as the pastoral team. Your subject teachers care so much about you doing well in your subjects. And like, for example, when I send an email, I'll get a response within hours. And if you want to go and speak to the teacher, they'll stay at break time at lunchtime after school. And you don't find that in other colleges or even other sixth forms. Like Highfields is very different in terms of the care that teachers give for students. Thank you very much, Emily. And finally, Yuvraj. Uh, personally, for me, I'd say that it's the support that the teachers give to you. Like for me, I was the only one doing further maths. And so being the only student in a subject was really difficult. But the teachers were always there to offer me support. I went to the year office about it. They allowed me to explore other options that I could do as well. And whilst I still did further maths, it was thanks to the teachers that I was able to do that. So it, I'd say it's the sixth form staff as well. Thank you very much, everyone. As I said earlier, there are many, many reasons why we all think the school is fantastic. Um, but the best thing I could say, I mean, hopefully many of you have had an opportunity to come in. I know many of our external candidates, for example, came to look around the school as part of our tours. And the majority of the students coming back for sixth form are students who've been with us from year seven to 11. So I'm sure you can think of many examples of the things that we've just talked. Brilliant, thank you very much for that question. Uh, the next question that's in is, what grades do students need to be able to stay in sixth form? Um, this is, well, there's, there's a, a number of different aspects to this answer. So first of all, we have both our generic entry criteria, but then we also have subject specific entry criteria. So if I take them one at a time and just very quickly talk through them. Um, in terms of our generic entry criteria, you need to achieve at least five grade fives at GCSE if you would like to follow an A-level programme of study. If you would like to follow a level three applied programme of study, then you need to achieve five grade fours at GCSE. So they're kind of the absolute minimum benchmarks. But then once you start looking at specific courses that you might wish to study, each of those courses will have their own specific entry criteria that you need to meet. So for example, if you wish to study biology, then you'll need to achieve a grade six at GCSE in biology, but you'll also need to achieve a grade six at GCSE in chemistry. And also a strong maths grade is really important for biology. So it's not quite as straightforward as saying, oh, to study biology, I need to do well in biology. For biology, you also need to do very well in chemistry and maths. So there are different things you need to think about. All of the subject specific entry criteria for each course is published on our website. So if you go to uh, the school website www.hswv.org.uk and then you click on the about tile and then go to sixth form on the right hand side of that page there's lots of information for applicants to look at and one of those documents is our subject specific entry criteria so that will give you all the details for every single subject the other thing to kind of tag on the end of that um, is, is specific to this year really given that um, schools have been closed for a number of months and the, the knock-on effect that that has had in terms of um, school exams and the results that you receive being done slightly differently than in previous years. As you well know, we've also put in a more enhanced sixth form transition process. 
And what we're also going to be doing for this year is we're going to be using the outcome of the sixth form transition process and the work that students have done to also help to inform whether or not students are able to enroll on certain courses in sixth form. Um, ultimately, the, the thing that drives us the most is that we don't want to put students onto courses that are not appropriate or suitable for them. And so we will always be very honest with students. We try and be as supportive as we possibly can. But part of being supportive, we don't think a course is right for you based on either your GCSE grades or the transition work that you've done. We will have that conversation with you. We will be upfront and honest with you and have that conversation and always look to support you in finding the right options for yourself. So that's kind of where you're at in terms of entry criteria for coming back to, to sixth form next year. Probably more complex than it has been previously, but we will make sure that we're there to support you in making the right decisions. Thank you very much for that question. Um, so I think this next question, looking at it, is a question where I'm going to head over to Mr. Maxfield, just so he's aware. So how is work experience sorted out, such as the experience we receive? Are we able to get to do this for any job or is it more for general jobs? So can students do work experience relation to specific careers, for example? And Mr. Maxfield will be able to tell you a little bit more about what we do for work experience. Yeah, so work experience is kind of one of our many extracurricular offerings and it makes up kind of one of the two part offering that's the main part of, of sixth form from an extracurricular standpoint. So you've obviously got the work experience and then you've got an extracurricular timetable as well. So I'll focus on the work experience for now because um, we might come back to the timetable a little bit later. So for work experience itself, we've set up a really clear kind of routine and tracked path method for you to follow to allow you to get work experience. Now, obviously for some people that work experience is gonna be sorted and they'll know what they want to go and do already. And for some people, they'll be really unsure about what that is. And either of those routes are fine because we've got steps in place along the route to help you and guide you where you need. So whether you know exactly what you want to go and do in the future and have got your work experience sorted or whether you're on the total opposite end of the scale, there's something in that pathway that will easily fit for you and allow you to make sure that you're doing exactly what you need to do. Now, in terms of planning the work experience, there isn't like a set week like you've had in year 11. It will come to a point where you can approach us saying that you'd like to go on work experience and tell us the dates that you would like to go and do it at that company, because we appreciate that different companies are probably going to have different times that will work. And as long as it doesn't clash with anything that's going on in school, whether that's school exams or coming up to the final bits of your year 12 study, then we're generally really flexible in terms of letting you go out on that work experience as long as you're aware and committed that you need to catch up on the work that you miss when you return. We really do feel that kind of work experience is a, is a major part of your, um, your time in sixth form. So making sure that you make the most of it, go and get everything that you need from that work experience is something we put really high up kind of on the scale. So if you want to go and do work experience, we're massive advocates of it. Start searching maybe already to get that place sorted and then just approach us when you're back at school and then we can help organise it and book it up for you. Thank you very much for that, sir. Very comprehensive. Uh, the next question that's come in is in relation to mobile phones. Are we allowed our mobile phones with us in sixth form? Well, technically, yes, in that you're not going to be expected to hand your phone in um, as you come into school in the morning. But what we will say is that you're expected to have the phones on silent or turned off and away at all times. I think the, the underlining principle here is that our sixth form students should be role models for all of our other students in school. And so we want our sixth formers to set the right example in terms of all of their conduct around schools. Use of mobile phones is just one example of that. So you shouldn't be seen using your mobile phone during lesson times. You shouldn't be seen using your mobile phone at break times. And you shouldn't be seen using your mobile phone at lunch times. If you need to make an emergency call for whatever reason, you need to speak to a member of staff and we will make sure that that's arranged for you. Uh, but really, there isn't a huge amount of need for you to be using your phones in school during the week. One possible exception to that is if you're sat independently doing your work, some students like to listen to music. We don't necessarily object to you having your headphones in and listening to music. And if you're playing your music through your phone, that's not a problem. As long as that phone, once the music is playing, is then put in a pocket or put away somewhere. What you don't want to see is mobile phones being left out on the desk. Because again, then we're not really setting the right example to the other students in school 
about how we should be using our mobile phone. So hopefully that answers the question. Um, but again, please feel free to follow up if you. Uh, next question, what will happen if our transition work is up to your standards, but not our GCSE results are not? That is a very, very good question because obviously we haven't had this situation before, so we've never been through this process before. The thing that I can guarantee is that each case will be judged on its own individual merits. So if you produce really high quality transition work and your GCSE results don't quite meet the entry criteria, what will happen then is that I will have a conversation with the head of department for that subject and we will decide based on the results and based on the quality of the transition work, whether or not we think that course is right for you. Again, I'll go back to what I said a moment ago. Our, our kind of underlining principle is, do we think enrolling you on the course is in your best interest? And if we think it is in your best interest and that you would be able to cope with the level of challenge of that particular subject, then that's a conversation we can have and that might well be an option. Equally, if on the balance of all the evidence taken together, we think that that's probably not in your best interest, then again, that's a discussion that we will have and we will support you in looking at alternative options. So there isn't necessarily a one size fits all approach in regards to that. It will very much be your individual circumstances once we see the GCSE results and we will go from there. But we're certainly willing to have a conversation and look at supporting you in the best way that we can. Thank you very much. Um, have any students from Highfields gone on to study at Oxbridge? Uh, well, they certainly have. Um, I'm going to hand over to Yuvraj in a minute, who is going to Oxford next year. Um, we've also got another student this year going off to Cambridge. Um, so that this year we've got two students going uh, off to Oxford and Cambridge, which is very, very good for the school. We're really, really proud of that. We have had um, examples in the past of students going off to Oxford and Cambridge. Um, it's usually only a small number each year, so it's not lots and lots and lots of students, but um, we're very, very proud of the students who do go off to Oxford and Cambridge. And actually looking at similar schools nationally, we do very, very well in terms of our university um, success rate. I'll just hand over very quickly to Yuvraj. Now, it might be quite um, a good opportunity for Yuvraj just to talk a little bit about his process of applying to Oxford and how he found it and whether or not he's looking forward to going there next year. Yuvraj? Yeah, so um, I decided I wanted to apply early in year 12, so I started preparing for the entrance exams that you um, have to sit. So Oxford and Cambridge, you have to sit entrance exams if you want to um, get into any of their subjects. So it's good to start preparing for those early. And then once you've sat that test, they don't look at the mark, they look at the, the work that you've put in. So if they think there's promise there for you to be able to succeed at Oxford or Cambridge, they'll invite you to interviews. And then interviews, you go and stay there for a couple of days. You get interviewed multiple times by different colleges and um, they essentially ask you subject questions. But it's more like a one to one tutor session, really. It's 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 enjoyable. Yeah, they, it doesn't feel like you're in an interview. It feels like you're sitting with someone going over some questions about a subject topic that you enjoy as well. So as long as you're passionate about the subject, I think that it's worthwhile applying if you think that you can make the top grades and you can you can succeed there and get in. Um, personally, I'm I'm quite excited to go to Oxford. It's it's a like it's amazing. It's very nice there. Looks really good. And um, they're still running for the first year, uh, despite coronavirus and everything. So, yeah, it's a it's an opportunity that I believe that you might as well go for because if you don't apply, then you'll never know if you were going to get in or not. Either way, yep. Thank you very much for that, Yuvraj. I mean, I am rightly proud of, of all of our students who are successful with applications to Oxford and Cambridge. But to be honest, I'm also very, very proud of the vast majority of other students who apply to many, many other universities across the country, all of which are very successful in their own right. So for this year, we have had over 100 applicants to university um, and all but a handful of those now have been offered a place at university and have accepted those places. So we will have over 100 students this year going off to university, um, many Russell Group universities, uh, many universities with really, really good reputations for the courses that they offer. So whilst we are very proud of, of our students who go to Oxford or Cambridge, we're also very, very proud of the fact that the vast majority of our students who want to go to university not only do they get offered places, but in, in the majority of instances, they also get offered their first choice place at university. 
So our success rate is one of the things that I think makes Highfields really stand out. And actually one of the, the things that's probably the most pleasing is that one of the measures the government has in terms of how successful a sixth form is, they look at how many of the students who go off to university are still at university in six months time? Because it's all well and good students being accepted into university, but if they accept, if they're accepted and then within two months they've dropped out and they're doing something different, then perhaps the advice, the guidance they have, have received hasn't been quite right, or perhaps actually they didn't quite know what they wanted to do. The number of high field students, well over 90% who go on and sustain their place in university really really strong so that to me suggests actually we've got very very good um, careers guidance and information available and students are able to make the right decisions for them that allow them to be successful in the future so i think that's something that's really really strong about high fields as well um next question it's quite an interesting question i use revision cards and mind maps to revise for gcse do you think that these methods will suit how much information and content there is to learn when studying a levels I'll have a go at answering this question, but then I think I'll also hand over to Emily and Yuvraj as well. Um, obviously, they haven't had the chance to sit their A-level exams because of school closures, but I do know that they were doing lots and lots of kind of revision work in the build-up to those exams, and they might be able to just give you a brief kind of overview of the way in which that they were preparing themselves. But in terms of things like flashcards or mind maps or any of the other revision strategies that you've used, you can absolutely use those strategies at A level. Revision techniques is often something that students find really difficult to get their head around and many, many students struggle to settle on a particular revision technique that works for them. So I would say if you found a technique that does work for you and you found a technique that helps you to remember information, you should continue to use that and you should try and maximise that as much as you possibly can. You might find that actually you might need to tweak the way in which you work for A-level. There is probably more content to learn than at GCSE and some of the skills that you'll be expected to demonstrate on, on your assessments might be slightly different as well and perhaps slightly more challenging. So you might need to adapt and change slightly, but members of staff in each subject area will be more than happy to support you with that. But definitely, if you've got a technique that works for you, don't feel that you need to abandon it just because you've transitioned from GCSE to A-level. Um, I'll hand over to Emily now and she can just tell you a little bit about the revision work that she was preparing to do. I would agree with um, Sir's point about if a revision technique works for you and carry on using it. My only piece of advice that I found different for GCSE to A-level is um, especially for subjects such as um, I do psychology and English as well as maths is I would do those mind maps as you go along. So for example you have specific topics in psychology and English and for example, if you finish a book or you finish um, a topic in psychology, do that mind map when you finish it, the week you finish it or the term you finish it and have it stored. Because if you come to your mocks, for example, in year 12 or your mocks in year 13 and you have to go and do all those revision mind maps in two weeks, it's never going to work. So I would say those revision resources work, but you have to be doing them as you go along. Um, I think I'll leave you to talk a bit about maths and those kinds of subjects because it's a little bit different. So. Yeah, so for my for maths and further maths, I'd be working out of textbooks, doing as many practice questions and practice papers as I can, because for subjects like that, it's all about exam technique. So you need to know what exam examiners are looking for in terms of marks and other such things. If for me in further maths, though, I'd I'd have a topic and I'd make flashcards out of like certain topic subject tips and stuff. And I thought that was really useful because it allows you to memorize the information. So for, for other more mathematical based subjects I'd suggest practice papers and practice tests because there's no equivalent to sitting an exam than doing a mock exam or a practice paper. Thank you very much both. Um, two points that uh, Emily and Yuvraj made there that I would just kind of reiterate myself. Um, first of all a point that Emily made the idea of creating revision materials as you progress through your course, I think is such good advice. Um, if you leave all of the revision materials to be made at the end of your course, that is going to be really difficult for you to do. It's probably going to be unmanageable. And it's in those situations where students start to panic themselves and start to become more anxious because they've got such a mountain of work to do. The students who 
uh, have been at high fields for year seven to 11, you'll have already done lots of work on the four R's. And obviously really key concepts in, in terms of that is constantly revisiting your work, constantly going back to it, rehearsing your learning as you go through your studies, not just all at the end when the exams are approaching. And if you can do that and you can get organized with that, that will be so beneficial for you. And it will mean that your revision is far less stressful than it might otherwise be. And one of the points that you've Raj made is the significance of practice papers or practice exam questions. You cannot be practice at doing what you're going to be assessed on in the exams. So um, you've Raj obviously taught in the context of maths, which is the subject that he's going to study at university, and it's certainly very relevant in maths, but also it can be applied to, to pretty much any subject. If the first time you're seeing that type of question is in the exam, you're going to find it really difficult to know how to answer that question. Whereas if you've done lots and lots of practice questions in the build up, you'll be much better prepared and you'll feel more confident. And I know that staff across the school in all the different subjects will make sure that you have access to many, many practice questions so that you can be really confident how you're going to do when you go into the exams at the end of your course. Thank you very much for that question. Um, next question, are students going to be sorted into form groups? If so, how will that be decided? Yes, you are going to be sorted into form groups. And if I'm honest, this is probably the, the, the one thing that I'm the most disappointed about not being able to get you into school for transition. Because had you been able to come into school for transition, today would have been based around you getting to know your form tutor and other students in your form group. There would have been form challenges for you to complete. So that would have been really, really nice. Obviously, it's much more difficult to do whilst everyone's dispersed and everyone's uh, in their own sort of homes. We will hopefully get an opportunity to do some of that form kind of bonding when you join us in the new year. But you will be sorted into form groups. How we do that, I'll be perfectly honest, there's a, a large group of it that's just random. Um, we see six form, whether or not you've studied at Highfields before, or whether you've not studied at Highfields before, we very much see sixth form as a fresh start for everyone. And so we tend to be quite keen to encourage you to meet new people that you might not have spoken to very much before, even if you've attended the same school as them. So we want you to meet new people, form new friendships, have some new experiences. And one of the best ways that we can do that is by really kind of jumbling you all up in terms of your form groups. Obviously, if there's a particular reason why um, you want to be in a specific form, you're welcome to discuss that with us. But as much as possible, we would encourage you to just kind of embrace that and really throw yourself into your new form group, get to know people that you might not have worked with before. Okay, thank you very much. If we have chosen to do EPQ, when will we be starting it? The answer to that is today. So part of the transition day is our virtual EPQ session, which Mrs. Sanger, our EPQ coordinator, has put together. Um, that should be available to you via Show My Homework now. Um, and it's probably worth saying at this point, actually, if any of the resources that you think you should have access to on Show My Homework haven't appeared today, including the EPQ session, please do email us and we'll make sure you get access to it. But they should all be on there. Um, and so if you go on to the EPQ session, Mrs. Sanger has done a short recorded PowerPoint that talks you through an introduction to the course. And then she's also set you a task to start doing, start having a thinking about some initial ideas. Um, if you think you're going to have um, from today until hopefully school reopens in September, you're going to have eight or nine weeks whereby you've got lots of opportunities to start doing some initial research, start looking at ideas for what you might want to do a project on. And it seems a shame to waste those eight or nine weeks without you doing anything. So Mrs. Sanger is very keen for you to start doing your EPQ research as soon as possible. And if you have a look at the task that's on show my homework, she's given you some more guidance in there as to how you should do. Are there any sixth form trips that occur and what are the extracurricular offerings? Uh, I think, again, uh, that is probably a question that I'm going to hand over to um, Mr. Maxfield, who will talk to you about that in a moment. I would just say, though, the extracurricular program in school is really, really very, very strong. Mr. Maxfield has spent an awful lot of time putting together a program that is both comprehensive in terms of its scope. We have a, an extracurricular session pretty much every week throughout the school year but it's also very broad in terms of its range. So it could be personal development session one week, it could be work-related learning session the next week, it could be something to do with volunteer work. There's a really kind of 
vast range of sessions that we've run. But I'll hand over to Mr. Maxfield, who will be able to give you a little bit more information about that extracurricular program. Yeah, so there's a, a variety of different sessions, as Mr. Pycroft just touched on, that, that's part of the extracurricular program. Um, and this makes up the second part of that extracurricular offering, which I spoke about earlier. So you've got your work experience, and then you've got the extracurricular timetable. Now, this extracurricular timetable was created because there's a lot of skills that you learn whilst on work experience, but there might not be the specific skills that you need to then go off to university. So the point of the extracurricular timetable is to offer support for your sub that you might be going to study at you or go on to in later life or it could just be a personal development session so you've got kind of two different categories that the sessions can fit into so i'll start with the easy one the um the subject specific sessions are generally run by universities or specialists in their area they'll come in they'll give you a little talk and they'll have the opportunity for question and answer sessions so you can have a variety so we've had ones for university this year where we've had teacher training sessions we've had specific um, subject offerings so it might be a math session that's on offer there's all sorts of different ones that can that can be put on offer and these are all based upon the feedback that we get from you at the start of the year as to the subjects that you're interested in and that you'd like to attend and then secondly there's the the, the personal development sessions so again there's a whole variety of those that are on offer so we have some total enjoyment ones which we had a, a magician in who came and told us his life when he was in an office job, dropped that and then just took up magic and now tours the world doing magic and doing shows with Dynamo. So there's total different kind of spur of the moment, things like that that we do. But then there's also personal development, such as we've had a sign language session in, we've had guide dogs in this year, and there's all different sorts of ones that go on. And a major one that we have had is we've had Johnny Phillips in. Um, Johnny Phillips, the Sky Sports presenter that some of you might know, he came into school uh, and did a, did a meeting for school about all the different stuff that he's done in his career into getting into journalism, how he's got into the profession that he's in now. And these sessions are all different every week. So it's something for you to look forward to. It's something that we can keep changing. Um, yeah, and look forward to, to running those next year. Thank you very much for that, sir. Um, so, the next question we've got coming, oh, just one second, whilst we get the next question. There we go. Uh, the next question, uh, Carl, you've actually sort of answered your own question in the question, which is quite impressive. Um, when would we be able to utilize the gallery balcony uh, at break times and lunch times? Uh, well, yes, basically that is largely the answer to the question, although there is a little bit more to say on that. Um, sixth form students, generally speaking, are allowed to use the gallery, uh, the balcony, sorry, out of the back of the gallery. Um, at break times and lunch times. Obviously, if the weather is bad, we won't open up the balcony. You won't be able to go outside in poor weather. Um, but days like today where the weather is, is lovely, sixth form students are allowed out there at lunch to eat their food or a break if they brought a snack. And you're also allowed outside the back of the gallery during lesson times if you're not in supervised private study um, to sit and do your work outside if you wish to. The one sort of condition that we have on that is that you respect that space and you take care of it and you leave it in the same condition that you found it and you will always find it nice and tidy. So as long as students are respectful in that space and they clear up any mess that they've they've left there and they don't leave it out for the next person, then we will keep the, the balcony open during nice weather for sixth form students to use. Uh, I might go out there actually this afternoon for half an hour myself. It's very nice in this kind of weather. Uh, next question is another one that we get an awful lot and, and to be honest can be answered very easily and very quickly. Is there a sixth form common room? No, there isn't. Uh, that is very much by design. Um, we really like that our sixth form students, as I mentioned earlier, are role models around the building. Um, we really encourage our sixth form students to integrate with all of the students across the peer groups, partly for that role model aspect, but also partly because it creates a much more inclusive um, community within school and actually what we don't want to do is we don't want to have our sixth formers feel or appear as if they're something separate to the rest of the school. We are very much one school, we very much coexist together and I think a really important part of that is sixth form being integrated with the rest of the school in the main school building. Um, I've already started my EPQ through my old school, how do I move all my stuff? To be honest that isn't a huge issue whatsoever. Um, all you would do is, is you would just um, change any of the, the details on the paperwork to, to Highfield School. 
but ultimately, as long as you're happy with your topic, and Mrs. Sanger is happy with your topic, um, it, it's not a problem. Your EPQ is very much about you and the work that you've done. So as long as it is your all your own work, you'll be able to bring that over with you. That won't be an issue at all. So you don't need to worry about that. Um, will we know before September who's in our form? The honest answer to that is probably not no. Um, given that after today, we're probably not going to have a huge amount of, of follow-up opportunity that you can email us for specific individual questions. But in terms of looking at tutor groups, I suspect that is something that we're going to sort out in September. Um, but I wouldn't worry about it over the summer. As I said, if there's a particular reason why you feel that you need to move form, we are open for you to come and discuss that with us and we will consider the reason that you provide. Um, so there is that option available to you, but again, it's very, very rare that, that you need to change form groups. And also it's worth pointing out that you're only in your form group for 20 minutes each morning. Form time runs every day from 8.45 to 5 past 9. There'll be a sixth form assembly on a Monday. So you actually only spend 80 minutes per week um, in your form, in your tutorial session, working with other people in your form group. So it's not a huge amount of time. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. When will we know if we have a place within Highfields? Um, after GCSE results day is essentially when we can start confirming places. So if you meet all the entry criteria and your transition work is of a really high quality, then that's a fairly straightforward process. We will just um, get you ready for enrollment in the new year. If you haven't met the entry criteria, that then can become um, a bit more complex. Obviously, we'll have to have a conversation about the right next steps for you but we will always make sure that someone's on hand to provide that information, advice and guidance for you. We'll look to be making those decisions and, and communicating that uh, very soon after GCSE results have been published. Um, just before I go on to the next question, uh, just to make you aware, we are going to stop at this point now um, taking questions in. We've got a couple of questions queued up. Uh, that means actually we're probably going to take us through to 11 o'clock. If you have got any questions that you've not yet been able to ask, please feel free to email the sixth form team, uh, sixth form staff at hswv.co.uk. That's absolutely fine. We will get back to you as soon as we can. So how do you balance an intensive study program with enrichment opportunities? Um, I'll give you my thoughts on that, but actually I'm going to go to Mrs. Corbett for this question because I think she's always got a really good perspective in terms of making sure you get your priorities right. And there is definitely, I think the word you've used in that question is very, very important. It's about balance. And there is a, a definite priority in terms of your academic studies, but there's also a balance to be had in terms of your enrichment activities and also just making sure that you take care of your own mental well-being and you've got things to do away from your studies. A-levels and level three applied study can be very, very intense at times. And it's important that you've got opportunities kind of step away from that and make sure you're taking care of your own mental well-being. So I'll hand over to Mrs Corbett now because like I say she's often got a very um, good perspective when it comes to that balance between school work. Thank you Mrs Corbett. Sorry it's all right we just struggled to hear all of your answer then Mr Pycroft. Um, I think it is. It is trying to get that balance right. It's trying to make sure that you plan well. Um, work as hard as you can in school. We open school from uh, 7.30 in the morning till 5.15 in the afternoon. Uh, sorry, 5.30. You're welcome to come in and study in those times. Um, get as much as you can done in school and then that gives you more time at home um, to do some of the fun things. Um, so it's about how you plan your time, I think, so that you've got that balance. Um, you know, and just make sure that you do some fun things. I will always say to you, right, what are you doing this weekend? Uh, what fun things are you meeting up with your friends? Are you doing sport? Have you got some exercise planned in? Because it really is about uh, having that balance. And if there are times when you're thinking that, that that's not quite right and you're spending hours and hours in your bedroom or working in front of your computer then come and have a chat and we can have a look at seeing what we can do to support. Mr Maxfield is really good um, at planning and organising and working with you um, to look at um, perhaps a, a diary and I know that's not everybody's way of working but I think it, it's quite good to look at lists in different ways. Um, so it very much is a balance 
And I always say my stock phrase is progress, not perfection. OK, and it is trying to get that balance, trying to keep up the work, but making sure that your mental health is really top form. If you're in the right place, you will work a lot better. So we're always there to help you um, and you can talk to us about that any time. Thanks very much for that, Madam. Um, next question. When we get our GCSE results, what do we do? Do we come to Highfield straight away? Uh, again, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, it's not entirely certain at this point. What I'll do is I'll talk you through how the process would normally run. And then obviously we might have to adjust that for this summer, depending on the guidance at the time in relation to how much school can open. So usually on GCSE results day, uh, students from Highfield would come in and collect their results and there would be members of the sixth form team on hand to uh, give any advice or guidance that they offer to you. Um, you will usually get um, a confirmation sheet essentially in your GCSE results. You would just fill that form out to confirm that you wish to accept your place and that you've met our entry criteria. You would hand that in and then you would be able to leave. If you aren't a Highfield student, you're one of our external applicants, once you've got your GCSE results from your own school, you can then come to Highfield to confirm your place. Now, in all honesty, it's probably better that you do that the day after results day because we're often very, very busy on results day um, dealing with requests from some of the students at Highfields. More than happy to, to speak to you on results day if we can fit you in. But a lot of the time, actually, it's better to speak the day after results day. and We've got a bit more time where we can sit with you, go through your options, met the entry criteria, brilliant. If you haven't, we can offer you a bit more time in terms of advice and guidance that you might need. Again, for this year, if we aren't able to have students in for results day, and, and, and as of yet, we haven't confirmed anything. If students can't come in for results day, then obviously those processes will need to change. Um, how we will change them, I honestly don't know until we know what results day might look like. If it's the case that results day has to be done remotely, i.e. students are sent their results at home, then we will do our very best to create opportunities for you to have access to um, information and advice and guidance that you need. As I've said before, you know, technology like the one we're using now through Microsoft Teams could be an option, could be a solution to that problem. I'm not entirely certain, but what I can promise you is as soon as we know what results day will look like and as soon as we know how you can access support, uh, for results day we will communicate that with you which is why it's really really important that you're checking your email accounts regularly throughout the summer i know it's quite nice to be able to go on for summer and just switch off entirely but just every few days just log back into your emails make sure you're checking them regularly um, and if you're an external applicant make sure you're checking your high fields email account regularly because that's how we will speak to you about anything i think that pretty much takes us through to 11 o'clock Thank you very much for all of your questions. Um, some really, really good questions, actually, a really quite broad range of questions. Hopefully this session has been uh, informative for you and you found it useful. It has been recorded, so all of the information we provided, you will be able to check back with later. What I will do is I'll upload a link to the recording of the session on to show my homework so that you can access it and review it and go back to anything that was said if you want to later. And as I've said numerous times already, if there's a question that you've got that you haven't had answered this morning or something you think about later that you want to ask us, please feel free to email uh, through to uh, sixth form staff at hswv.co.uk. Someone from the sixth form team will get back to you as soon as possible. On behalf of myself, Mrs. Corbett, Mr. Maxfield, Emily and Yuvraj, thank you very much for listening. and We'll see you soon. <laughs>